Hey there folks, Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. Dime novels in the Old West. Let's talk about it. This week I had the good fortune to be a part of the Pistoleros Wild West Show here in Tucson. And tonight I'm going to be your introducer, or your introductee. <laughs> the guy's going to tell you what's coming up next. As well as being the MC, Jerry asked me to do Firewatch, which seemed like an easy task for me. Oh, come on! I'm going to take you out, fancy Wait. pit! Watching the fire. Beautiful. Santee! Firewatch means you watch the fires. When you see them, you put them out. So come on, let's go. Well, luckily I only made that mistake once. The next time you see a fire, you put it out! Oh now you tell me. Thankfully, nobody was seriously injured. The show was called The Making of Wild Bill, and it was a comedy about how a journalist didn't think the Davis Tut shootout was interesting enough and with Hickok's help embellished it. That got me thinking about how many times the newspaper articles I find from the period tell a fantastic story. The trouble with some of this history is that the only account jotted down is from the press. Well, this can be an issue. Now the legend is born. But you know what? You can't have a legend just by name alone, can you? Well, well the press has to get involved. Journalists like Ned Buntline would create these amazing stories and yeah, unfortunately, they stretch the truth quite a bit. Unlike today's journalists, you know, so. <laughs> Enough about my uphill battle for the truth. In vino veritas. Let's talk about dime novels. The dime novel came to be in 1860 when brothers Erastus and Irwin Beadle published a paperback book entitled Malaska, The Indian Wife of the White Hunter. There was a dime song book with a collection of lyrics from the period that went out previously and was an immediate success. So, the Beatle brothers moved forward with their orange-covered novels. With a cost of only 10 cents to the public, they sold 65,000 copies in about three months. Well, you can guess that other publishers jumped on the dime novel bandwagon, and soon they were all over the place, delighting young readers. Originally, the content was taken from previously released weekly publications called Story Papers. But as time went on, they dealt with the pioneers in the Wild West and their fantastic exploits. Kit Carson, Buffalo Bill, Mustang Sam, and Gertie of the Gulch. Dime novels were largely fictional stories, so the ones about real people were usually fabrications of the truth. However, in the case of Wild Bill Hickok, the events written about his life really happened. But they may not have been as interesting to the public had it not been for these adventurous writings. <laughs> Ned Buntline was one of these men. He wrote dime novels and was a known embellisher. Who are you playing today? I'm Ned Buntline. Oh, well, I'm gonna be talking about you in this video this week. Oh, are you? Yeah. yeah like nice. That. Did you know that you actually faked being a colonel in the Indian Wars? I didn't know that, but that doesn't surprise yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, he apparently lied. But he wrote a good story. He was also credited with gifting customized Colt single actions with 12-inch barrels to Wyatt Earp and others. However, there is no evidence of this. Remember, old Ned was not often a truthful fellow. How could you believe me when I said I love you when you know I've been a liar all my life? The dime novel was good and bad. First, it provided people heroes in a time that America needed some of those. Gallant and brave people battling insurmountable odds and coming out alive. The bad was that people believed every word. Folks like Catalani and Little Britches, after reading dime novels, tracked down and joined the Doolin Gang, only to be incarcerated as outlaws later on. Well, it says here, but Doolin has an ironclad discipline and an almost Oriental-like concentration. What the hell is this? Let me see that. The dime novel craze went on into the 20th century and eventually was overshadowed by comic books, radio, and television. 
I'm sure we'll talk more about these in the future and of the power of the pen in the era of the Old West. <laughs> well, folks, that's it for another episode. Thanks for watching. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on down the trail. Really? That's how you do firewood. Now, Santee, the next time there's a fire, you gotta. <laughs> hey, wasn't that scar on the other side of your I face last night? Yeah, and then it healed, and then I got in a, a knife fight with the bear, and oh. the bear also had a knife and did that to me. No, it's probably that. Wow, that's. You guys yeah. live a very interesting so life. Yeah. Oh my god.